Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And this is the part 2 of the catch up video for this week so check out yesterday's if you missed it or stick around for today's. I mean they're both, they'll, they'll both be good. Um, and this is going to be the one where I talk about what the other two people on the stream were doing. Uh, that's, so I, yes, yesterday I talked about myself and Tristan. Today it'll be more about um, Mark and Mike. So there's, uh, there's been some major progress made. Uh, let's start off with Mike because I'm already staring at one of the things he did. So in Crast with Crastorio 2, you have a lot of options of ways to deal with um, the different ores when they when they come in. There's the very basic way, which let's, let's have a look. Uh, let's, let's have a look at copper copper plates. So you can make a copper plate out of copper ore, and that it works. It's it's quick and easy, but it turns 20 and it's, it's only 75% effective in that you get you put in 20 copper ore and you get out 15 copper plates. Alternatively, you can make enriched copper, which is nine to nine, as you see here. And then five to five. So this is this is a this is a nice throughput of exactly of, of one to one across the whole system. So putting this in gains us an extra thirty three percent because it's going from three quarters to a whole um, of of copper on the output. And since, as I was saying yesterday, we have a massive shortage of copper, um, or at least massive need for copper, doing these upgrades is very very worthwhile. There are also further recipes where you can turn copper ingots into copper plates, and also. That's probably not relevant. So this will this will probably happen at some point in the future, but at the moment it's quite a long way off. It's behind various it's behind, it's behind various sciences that we can't do yet because this needs, needs us to go have gone to space and to have found vulcanite. So let's ignore that for now. But at the moment this means that we've got the um, we've, we've got the co copper ore coming in here as before, exactly the same as before. It's been we've got the trickle coming in here from the core mining and then the flood coming in from the um, uh, from the from, from the train systems from the mines uh, coming in down down here and this is all going in and being being turned into enriched copper and then into uh, into copper itself we're doing the same thing over here with iron as well we haven't got quite as bigger we haven't put in, got quite as many um, smelteries in here because basically because we haven't needed them the iron production is 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 satisfied we've got enough down here in the stations that this system is more than good enough however again we've got the uh, we've got the enrichment process happening here because it's very worth doing because it um it produces that extra third that you, and is very therefore very very useful so to, in order to do the run the enrichment process you need to bring in the ore obviously and then sulfuric acid and water and it outputs dirty water so over here we've got we've got pi a system of pipes and um, uh, lever levers and pulleys no pipes in this case to 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 bring that in um the the sulfuric acid is brought in from from a station up here, so it's dro dropped off by train train in the station, comes down the pipe, goes in here, dumpty 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 dumpty, and is made into, and is used for the um, used for the enrichment. There's also pipes along the bottom here, bringing it over for this stage and for anywhere else it's needed further on. Water is brought in similarly. Presumably, there's somewhere that yeah, there's a lake over here. So there we go. We're pulling up water here, uh, so that's, that's easy enough. Um, and then we're taking away the dirty water, and again, that's going through a um, cleaning plant, a water clean purification plant, or so filtration plants here, um, and that's being turned back into water, clean water. And so we've got the usual system up here where we have um, a, this, this, is, this um, tank is connected to this pump, and the pump is only turned on when there's less than 10,000 water in there. So we, so we can use the pump for topping it up because we do use up a little bit of water with this. We don't get out quite as much as we put in, which is interesting given we've got a flood of liquid coming in from the acid as well, but I'm actually quite glad it's that way around. And then we also get out this dribble of miscellaneous stuff. So at the moment we're producing iron and stone. Or at the moment we probably possibly should be changing all these recipes to be producing the um, to be producing copper, since that's the one we're getting seems to be getting through the most of. But never mind, because those can then be just fed in down here. They're going straight back into the into the into the system and can then be turned and then can then be process turned into in, into whatever's needed further down the system. Now it looks like a I think an iron train must have just come through because suddenly this seems to be flowing again. Um, yeah, so there we go. You can see the iron flowing in here. It's, it's, this train has arrived and filled up, so we've now got a little bit of space at the bottom of here. So we're filling that up again, and so so the whole system has woken up. But, but the demand is sufficiently low that this isn't going to be a problem. We have uh, some iron ore in the in in the in the system down here. So yes, this is all working nicely. Copper works in much the same way as as I was saying. Um, stone, there isn't there isn't a um, enrichment stage for stone, so we're still just turning that into into stone bricks like this. Um, and then iron, uh, sorry, steel. Right, this one appears to still actually be being done very, in a very very old fashioned way. Um, Mike has clearly not had time to come over and upgrade this one yet. There's been a little bit of an upgrade because we've got the got the uh, electric furnaces up here, but we're still using steel furnaces and therefore fuel down here and no enrichment stage. So. 
I'm not sure how he's going to fit it in. Possibly an enrichment stage, an, ir an irony stage, and then a steely stage. Um, and that's going to require quite a lot more landfill just to top, cut, to, to fill in this lake up here. But that seems to be that's probably going to be a reasonably sensible way of doing it. Um, with these machines, maybe these should be replaced with um, smelters as well, with uh, iron, no, with electrical furnaces as well. I'm not sure it really matters. Um, we do seem to have a bit of a shortage of wood coming in though, and that interestingly, the shortage here is of the wood, not of the uh, not uh, to, to make the coke, not of the um, not of the iron ore itself. So that's that's interesting and, and, and a bit different. So I think we're going to have to increase the amount of wood production here, or perhaps bring in a train from somewhere else. We also seem to have squeezed in a uh, uranium mine here, which is. Um, nice i imagine we're going to definitely going to need uranium at some point in the future and that's another thing that requires sulfuric acid so it's quite convenient that we're able to just presumably yeah there's a massive sulfuric acid pipe running oh no no okay so there's there's stations up here there's separate stations for dropping off acid for the um for the sulfur for the sulfuric acid for the, for the uranium mine and the um uranium pickup compared to the sulfuric acid drop off here for the enrichment process i'm slightly surprised given where that is maybe this was put in before this acid supply was available i'm i'm, I'm not sure but this doesn't seem to be a um yeah it doesn't seem to be a thing so we're we actually have a decent supply of, of uranium now we've got twenty five thousand in there i've got 25 in each of these and we're just filling up the belt as well so this is very very nearly full so that's doing really well but we are going to need more um, more greenhouses I think in order to produce the wood in order to make the coke down here for the steel I assume that's the only way to make um, uh, steel so we've got steel plates so is iron plate and coke I'm sure um, or make them out of barrels or ingot so there is an ingot processing recipe but we're not we're not onto that yet um, and these are all recycling things and coke has to come yeah coke has to come from wood and coal so we're going to need yeah we just we just need more more wood production around here or maybe ship it in from elsewhere i'm uh, e either way either 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 works but yeah we don't we don't have enough of that so these could be upgraded to electric furnaces it wouldn't make an enormous amount of difference but it would cut down on the amount of pollution produced so uh, it's up to mike whether he does that i guess um Next up is the this is this is the this is the rare metal. So we're doing enrichment over here as well. But just to be different and awkward, the recipe for rare metal enrichment takes in hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, I guess, rather than sulfuric acid. So it's, it's different. It still outputs the same dirty water. So we can still pass that down the pipe here to be processed appropriately. And it still uses water as an additional ingredient. So that's still, again, being brought in by a pipe from over there. But instead, we ne we now need the hydrogen chloride, which is being made somewhere nearby, I think. Yes, up here. Here we go. So up here we've got. So it turns out making hydrogen chloride not too difficult. Um, he takes 50 chlorine, 15, 50 hydrogen, and chlorine and hydrogen are produced from sand and water in a in an electrolysis plant. Electrolysis plant, and conveniently they're in producing a one-to-one -one ratio and they're used in a one-to-one -one ratio so this is relatively simple you don't have any weird side ingredients coming out that you need to deal with but you do need a supply of sand now conveniently here there is a supply of sand because this is where we're crushing stone into sand in order to make the glass and the silicon um, but it's yet another load on that and we we don't have a great stone supply at the moment we're a bit still a bit short of it um, we don't have as much as we'd like for all of the things that are using it so it's a little bit unfortunate, but sadly, it's it's just another thing that's needed. And so this is now producing hydrogen chloride, not quite as quickly as it's being used, unfortunately, due to the aforementioned shortages of sand. <clears throat> but that is allowing us to enrich the um, the rare metals down here, and then pass the enriched rare metals up here to be to be cooked, and then we can come back around here to be loaded into a train. And we've got massive quantities here. These are basically being used for blue circuits, and that's mostly it at the moment so occasionally a train will head over to the blue circuit production dump off the uh, the rare metals and come back but there's not a huge amount of demand for these at the moment so this is currently absolutely fine as part of um, mike's experiences with ores and metals and things like that he's been going around with um with some of some of the uranium we've been producing um and just sneaking it into people's pockets which seems a little bit mean so <laughs> so currently we've had um one death from uranium mark died to it and mike is quite strongly denying any sort of involvement in that um which seems a little bit um well who knows yes he's strongly denying it but in in uh, with crastorio 2 there is an additional sort of effect of radiation damage. So I can stand. It turns out I can stand on uranium ore that's lying on the floor without any problems. But if you stand in a uranium patch, or if you pick some of it up, you can see my health's going down quite quickly there. So let's take that out, put it back in the in the warehouse over here, because um, that's dangerous. So 
yeah, Mike snuck some into my inventory. Fortunately, I was paying attention at the time and was able to um, take it out and drop it on the floor before it before it did too much damage to me. Uh, Mark was less less um, less lucky, should we say? Uh, all in the, he ended up with some in uranium in his inventory through unknown methods at the moment. We uh, we need to have CSI Factorio in order to work out how this is done. And he'd, he'd nipped AFK for a moment while he was doing it, and he got radiated all the way to death. So. There's um, there's been one additional death this week from uh, from radiation, um, which is interesting, and we're still not sure whether it was a murder. Mike was going around trying to blame absolutely everybody for his um, uranium injuries, uranium re radiation related injuries, until we worked out that actually what had probably happened is that he'd harvested one of these asteroids and these meteorites, sorry. And with when you when you when you grab one of these, you can see the uh, the expected resources over there on the side. Um, those aren't very accurate. Um, if I if I mine this one, then oh, I did get some uranium that time though. So we think this is probably what happened to him that he ended up with some ura uranium from from mining an asteroid like that, and that's probably what caused him to get hurt. And he then went off and blamed everyone else because of course he would. <laughs> so that was um, an interesting um, an interesting side note in 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 the, in the run. But mostly, he has he has mostly been useful, to be fair. Um, and he's come along here and he's, he's built up all of these systems. Uh, Mark then extended this one down a little bit because it was originally like this. And he re re reckoned there was there was no point in having a balancer in the middle. Um, and he might as well just... Have, and when we could fit quite a lot more furnaces in instead. So this is a decent, healthy supply of, uh, of um, copper coming through here. And if we look at the production graphs, I can get the copper plate one up. And we'll see that if we look back far enough... So at some point we had a, we had a bump from unenriched to enriched, and I believe that was here, and that didn't give us that much of a boost in quantity, but it gave us a massive boost in efficiency. So we we're producing it at about the same speed, but using quite a lot less ore. Then we got extra smelteries in here, and that has bumped it from this much to 3.6k to about 6k. So it's it's not doubled, but it's a good healthy increase over what we had before. So we are making copper plates at 6,000 per minute at the moment, which feels like quite a good rate for this sort of stage of the game. Um, and if we look down here, we can see that, yeah, we've got 19,000 in here. We've got what eight. So yeah, yeah, we've got a lot of copper in here. It's just that we don't have enough trains taking the copper from here over to over to here. If we look in here, there's only one train doing copper drop, copper runs. So I think we need to stick in a second one of those. Um, and then hopefully that'll just park in here, waiting to go into the copper plates from smeltery stop here. And yeah, hopefully that'll, that'll all work out quite nicely and we'll have a have a nice smooth system where they just run around and then rejoin the back of the queue when they're uh, when, when, when ready. That concludes Mike's um, part of the uh, sh in the shenanigans of the, of the, of the last stream. So uh, now we'll move on to Mark. Um, Mark has gone over to the, the big oil area. That's this massive processing facility here where we've got oil being brought in by train, as is traditional, um, and then being processed, and, and coal as, and, and iron as well, and then being processed down into the various oil byproducts. And he's added in an additional one somewhere here in fact to take in to take in sulfur which, so we've got an additional oak we've got a drop off station oh no no we're making <coughs> we're making sulfur on site of course we are because it's an oil product so that's been then being brought around here added to, with a bit of iron added to it and turned into sulfuric acid along with some water uh, which we can then put into into a train in, onto the train system here in order for this train to take it away and can keep supplying the um the blue circuits and the uranium mining and the um <coughs> and the ore enrichment so we're doing lots of that here. So essentially now making making our copper plates requires a little bit of crude oil in order to do so. So that's um I I'm assuming I'm hoping that the um the new recipe is significantly more efficient overall and is going to generally be better. It definitely gets you more resort gets you more iron it gets you more plates for your ore, but it does also require a certain amount of other stuff to go into it as well. So maybe we should do the maths on that. Maybe we, we, maybe we will. Maybe we won't bother. We'll see. But so yeah, that's that's got us a nice supply of acid, which is uh, working. The plastic supply is it's running flat out along here, but it's still it's it's, it's not quite enough. Oh, it's, it's, it wasn't quite enough. So Mark has put in an additional block of plastic production down here, and we're using red belts for it. So it's it has been improved. <clears throat> Whether it's actually sufficient now? Oh, oh yeah, there's there's fifty something thousand in here. This might mean we need another plastic train. But basically, it's working. Maybe we need to actually. Maybe we just need to make the plastic train longer, because 27,000 is is many, many trains. As I said before, a train is four of these rows, or at least a wagon is four of these rows, and there's one of these warehouses per wagon. So there's lots and lots available here. So I think we need at least one more of these trains, and maybe we need to start making these into long trains as well. 
Mark has also done a little bit of he's done a little bit of the tidying up of the things that were on my to do list from last time. Things things that were here are things that we need to do. Um, he went in and got them done rather quickly and efficiently. So over here we've got massive pyroflux storage. There's approximately none in here because it's all being pumped over into the station here. So when we do finally start to need pyroflux, we can get it from here and it can be taken out to and <clears throat> and and taken to wherever it's needed for whatever it's needed for i'm still not sure what we're going to need pyroflux for but i'm i have strong suspicions it's going to be in a sort of a a next level of of something processing so we'll, we shall see as that happens he also did some of the core miners that i was talking about in the uh, previous episode so we now have literally all of the core mining drills in all, all the core seams inside the uh, inside the factory at um, boundaries uh, now have a core miner on them and some um uh, filters next to them to keep the air clean. So in theory, we shouldn't have. Yeah, as you can see, we've got the horribly, horribly dirty core mine. But because of those filters there, we've now got basically no pollution being leached away from it. There's a little bit right next to it, but basically it doesn't it doesn't drift away and, and go off and upset the biters. So that's that's good. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got that weird double station thing again that I was talking about in the last video, where there's um core core mining pickup and also filter drop off and dirty filter pickup in the same place, but. Uh, I'm not going to be too rude about it because it does seem to basically work. He's built another two iron mines apparently. Uh, let's see if we can find them. I know there's a patch note, but it's not that patch. There's a stone mine there, which I think he was also responsible for. Um, he hasn't said so, but oh, maybe that was the one that was already there. Um, but he's built some more iron mines, so that explains why we have plenty of iron in here at the moment and why everything seems to be okay. Oh, there's, yeah, here we go. There's a couple up here. Probably, probably these ones. And as usual, they've got a... Um, a belt going all the way around to clean up all of the pollution from this area. Um, I think it's leaching off the uh, the free power ones. Um, yeah, so the free power is is doing is, is um, the drop off for the filters for free power is going around both both the uh, the free power and the, and and all the mining uh, mining mines over here. So this is working well. We're picking up massive quantities of, uh, of um, iron and everything is full and has gone to sleep. So that's good. He did the uranium mine that I mentioned. He's apparently done a little copper mine. Um, and has increased production of basically all of the things as well. So copper plates, acid, and plastic. So we've got, so we've got plenty of those thanks to uh, thanks to Mark's efforts. So that brings me to the basically to the end of what's been done. So let's have a think about what we want to do next time. We do have a to-do list still. Top of the to-do to -do list is to, is to uh, is to start um, protecting ourselves from space because we haven't really done that yet. Um, I've started down here. The, this is as you can see here. I, I made a little bit of a start on this, and then we realised it was getting rather late and it was time to stop streaming. So here we've got a machine that will make the umbrella defences and make the um, uh, meteorite defence guns. And at some point around here, we're also going to need to make the ammunition for the meteor defence guns. Or it doesn't have to be here, actually. It could be anywhere. But here seems sensible because it's where the guns are being made. Um, as you can see, I didn't quite get all the way through that because I ran out of time. But next time, I'll um, I'll finish these off. I'll get these building and we'll have all of the, all of the defences we need um, and be able to get that up and running. And with plenty of time uh, time to go as well. Because if I look in here, we've on the energy beams. We've still got uh, 12 hours before the, before the first coronal mass ejection will actually hit Norvis. Um, so... We believe that with, once we've got this umbrella defence up and running, we already have the... Um, where is it? Here. Yes, we already have this massive, massive steam battery here in these tanks and all of these turbines that will allow us to produce enough power to defend against the coronal mass ejection when it finally arrives. So this should just should just work uh, once we drop in the umbrella defense i think i'd want to have the this this rank of um, accumulators linked up to it as well but basically this will um this will allow us to protect against the uh, coronal mass ejection when it happens and hopefully all will be well the big guns that are going to be being made here will protect against the rocks falling from the sky like these ones all the way across here and down here these fall in and occasionally they land on something you care about and destroy stuff and then you have to go in and dig them up and do some repairs and things like that and it's, it's a little bit annoying so it'd be nice to have these being shot down before they land i did the maths during the uh, the last uh, run uh, the 0.5 run and i think i worked out that if you have about if you have about 14 um, meteor defense guns you're very very unlikely to be hit by a meteor you can never actually get it down to being definitely never going to be hit by one because each gun only has a finite chance of hitting. So there is always a chance of something getting through and, and smashing things up a bit. So yeah, high priority to get these up and running. And that was one of the things I was doing the, um, the blue circuits for because both of these require blue circuits in order to make them. So that's why the blue circuit production facility up here was my top priority. And whilst we don't have a good flow of them yet, we do at least have some that have been brought over by hand, put onto the bus, so they do exist. Um, and if necessary, I can always go and grab some more by hand out of the train. So we do have 
some we just don't have quite as many as I would like to have uh, but it's you know it's a matter of time we also need more stone mining because as you as you've seen as I've been looking around over here the stone this this is yeah you can see there, there's no stone here this is not, not this is not good all of the stone nearly all the stone we're getting is coming in from the core mining and at this stage of the game that's just not fast enough it's, it's not bringing in anything like enough yeah we're keeping the stone bricks reasonably happy sure but we're basic but we're not we're not we don't have anything like enough coming through here for making into sand to make all of the things around here now that looks like it might be a, a train might have come in when I wasn't looking and so this is probably the, the contents of the train spread across the belts here but we need them to be coming in a lot more often and a lot more, bring just bring in a lot more stone because this isn't enough and so that means we need more stone mines which means we need to find stone patches uh, I did find one when I was looking around in the last uh, last week I can't remember where it was now but there, there was another one that oh, there's, 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 there's one um, and we also found a couple that were sort of a bit outside so there's 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 two, five, five or so million there's about 10 million between these two um, it just needs a little bit more um, land liberating so uh, yeah that's potentially problematic trying to get out there but it's, it is it is something we can try and do if the stone crisis becomes any worse becomes any more of a crisis we also need to tell uh, Mark to stop paving everywhere because this, there's a lot of a lot of stone has gone into all of this um, and we could have used that for other, other other things but and now we all fly around everywhere we don't we don't need to move faster when we're running so that's fairly that's not really necessary Another thing I'd like to do is start putting production module, productivity modules into things. So here I, I set up a, a basic system that is producing productivity modules. Um, the, the, the rates aren't quite balanced here, but it's close enough. Uh, these take um, 15 seconds to build. These take... Oh, these take 15 seconds as well, but they require two. Okay, so actually what I should have is another one of these machines above here feeding back down into it. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll add that in. But we do now have 120 productivity module twos. And that means we could then start thinking about putting them into particularly the copper area over here and maybe the and maybe this and maybe the stone related areas just so that when we when as these machines run, they produce significantly more of whatever it is they're producing. Now the downside is they will also start to run quite a lot slower. So per minute they'll produce significantly less, but, uh, but per input ore they'll produce a bit more. Um, so we'll have to decide what's what's the point where that's worth doing. And if and if we do put productivity modules into all of these, because we don't have any speed module. Well, we don't have beacons at the moment, so we can't speed module these things up to make them go faster. At least I don't think we have beacons. If we do, it'll be the very very basic ones. Um. No, we don't have even have basic beacons. Are you no wide area, wide area two, flare stack, flammables. I don't know where the basic beacons are there, but I don't think we have them yet. Um, no, there you go. You, you read it here. No recipes found for beacon. So we haven't actually got beacons yet. So we can't we can't put in speed modules to bring their speed back up again. Uh, so all we can all we can really do with these is shove productivity modules and then power will go up we'll get more stuff out yes but we won't be able to but they'll also be a lot slower so there are a couple of options for that you can either make these much 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 bigger you can put up with the slower dribble of stuff coming out or you can wait until you get beacons and i think we might have to do the wait until we get beacons state step of that because the rate we're making productivity modules at we're not really going to have enough to um to beacon every single machine if we make this into a massive massive facility which is a shame because I would quite like to. I would quite like to get beaconage go. Uh, no, so get productivity modules get right up and running on this. Mark would also like me to get on with um, putting nuclear power generation stuff onto the bus. So down here, we, we we might as well look into nuclear power because we've got lots and lots of uranium at this point, and so it'd be good to get the um, get the centrifuges up and being being made. There we go, centrifuges, those things, and probably the nuclear reactors. Although I don't see them on here maybe we haven't quite got there oh no it's up here nuclear reactors heat pipes and heat exchangers up and running because uh, um, whilst we do have the free power from the biomethanol up here this is pretty space hungry for the amount of power it produces so it might be worth trying to have a slightly more um putting in basically putting in a nuclear pl power plant somewhere as a, sort of a, as a base load thing i'm not sure uh this is i mean this is completely free it just needs more and more and more adding to it and taking over more and more of the world as we as we start to start to build things up and one of the things we've noticed about um about this particular game and i don't know whether it's because we're playing uh 0.6 factorio 0.6 uh, no, space exploration 0.6 whether it's something from crastorio or whether it's just the luck of the dice rolls but this does feel like a very lakey map 
there's a lot there aren't any re they don't feel like there's any really big open areas of land um there's just lots and lots of little lakes everywhere and this could be another space exploration thing that's designed to encourage you to get off this planet as soon as possible and find somewhere where it's a bit easier to build um or it might just be as i say the luck of the luck of the roll when we uh, when we when we generated the map one of the things I will say about it, though, is it does make defence a bit easier because you tend to have lots of little bottlenecks where you can put a relatively small wall across without having to put a sort of a huge one that runs over an enormous distance like that um, in order to protect an area. So it has its advantages, but also on the flip side, it does mean that we don't have big areas that we can just carpet with these things. Uh, not unless we find a much cheaper way of producing landfill anyway. <laughs> But we're, yeah, we're probably going to want nuclear power plants like that on other planets, unless we, unless you just always go in and drop some of this in, and then chuck a load of wood in just to get it, to get it, or to chuck some power in from some solar panels to get it up and running. I don't know, but it's yeah, there's there's th things to consider. We'll we'll have to decide what we reckon the best way of generating power is, and and, and Mark has asked me to start producing uh, nuclear stuff. <clears throat> We do also want the cargo rocket launch and landing pads because that's the next stage of, you know, space exploration, so we can actually go to space. Um, those require a fair amount of stuff, maybe they're under weaponry. Um, I don't know where they are. But yeah, you, you, need, you need quite a lot of stuff to make cargo rockets, and, so, and it's, it's quite an evolved process, so we'll, we're going to need to look at, look at that. So to make the cargo rocket sections, you need low density structures, which are a problem as we know, rocket control units, which we don't have a lot of. We've made some, but we don't have an enormous number of them, but they're not too, they're not too bad. You need cargo pods, which is red circuits and iron and steel and stuff. Fuel tanks, more red circuits, and heat shielding, which we kind of got. So yeah, we're going to need to we're going to need to start making quite a lot of these. And then event, and then just after we got comfortable with making those, we're going to get develop this research as well, uh, where, where you add in some beryllium plates as well, and everything becomes a lot cheaper because it goes down from. I still the same number of. Oh, okay, it's the same recipe except you put in eight beryllium and you get two cargo rocket sections out instead of one. So it's. Half as, half the price, except there's also beryllium in there. So it's probably be, probably a bit better. In fact, it's definitely a lot better. Beryllium's not that hard to get. So yeah, that'll be a thing to think about sometime in the future. But that's oh, actually there's only one rocket research in. But we were, but as I say, we'll need to get beryllium up and running before we can before we can do that. So that's on the to-do list as well. Um, mining drills mark two. That, I've been asked to make those as well. Um, let's have a look. What? Ooh, mining, mining. So that'll be this one. Electric mining drill mark two. So we can go from. Um, Get an extra 50% mining speed, a bigger mining area, and slightly more pollution and slightly higher power consumption. Okay, I mean that seems fair. It's, it, it gives you a slightly, it gives you, it's, it's a little bit faster, and it can cover a slightly larger area, which means you can run railways through the middle of mine of um, of, corp, of of ore patches without worrying about not being able to get at what's underneath them quite so quickly. Uh, we've also got the big mining drills. So they, they're, oh, they're, 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 that's basically a mining drill mark three because it's faster and bigger again. Um, and then we have the mining drill mark. Three. Three, which oh, is faster but a smaller area than the big drill. Okay, so I am aware that in um, um, in, uh, in in Factorio Space Exploration 0.5, some of the more some of the exotic materials like uh, iridium required the big mining drill in order to mine them. Um, they, also, they also have more module slots. Interestingly, uh, it'll be interesting to see what what we require in this one in order to do this. But we may well move on to these anyway, just because they're a big area and they're quite quick or we may, may want these because they're even quicker we'll see how it goes what's the recipe for those like that's expensive we're not going to be doing them for a while that's not too bad it requires blue circuits but otherwise that's not like, not too bad and the big ones yeah the, that, that that that's fairly cheap we can do this without too much difficulty so you can see there's that there's that progression through Crest, with Crestorio 2 where you've got the four different mining drills and they all take different different they all take the previous one and then if something else awkward and exotic in order to, in order to make them <laughs> So I think that covers everything we've been doing, thank you, and everything we've got planned. What well, everything we've got on our to-do list at the moment. We'll uh, no doubt that we'll we'll think of lots more things as we go. And as soon as we get into space, then suddenly the 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 the, the solar system is our oyster, as they say, or possibly our giant lobster. So we need to get out there. We need to start building everything up, getting getting things working. Oh, one more thing I will mention is that we've now all got personal trains. So down here we have our uh, our own little trains, our own colours. So we've got purple for Tristan, we've got orange for Mike, green for Mark, and blue for me. And when you take your train somewhere. We now we've we've added in a mod that uh, puts this lovely glow effect around it. So this is inspired by the um, by the GTA game we play, where all of the hunters have underglow on their cars, so they uh, to make them stand out a bit and make them a little bit more obvious when they're when they're driving around, especially at night. So we thought it'd be quite cool for all the personal vehicles to have the same sort of underglow when we're um, when we're uh, playing uh, when we're playing Factorio as well. 
So that, that brings us to the end of the uh, end, end of the video, pretty much, I think. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll be coming back to uh, coming back on Monday to watch us carry on carry on with the stream. To come back on Wednesday as well in order to uh, watch the Dyson Sphere program stream because that's going quite well. And I'm uh, yeah, I'm getting to the point where I'm really starting to enjoy it now. It's it's um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm having a good time. So that's, that tends to make tends to make for a good stream. There's a catch-up videos at the weekend, of course, and don't forget to check out the stream sponsor, which is treefall.be slash lawrenceplays to get 20% off your first order. So, thank you very much for watching, enjoy the outro video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.